for being with us today. We're going to continue our devotions into the book of Psalm, chapter 4 and verse 7. The Bible says, Thou hast put gladness in my heart more than in the time that their corn and their wine increased. Has it ever occurred to you that nothing has ever occurred to God? God has never said, huh, I never thought of that, or I'm glad that you brought that to my attention because I didn't see that coming. They say also that one can endure sorrow alone, but it takes two to be glad. A friend is this. A friend is a push when you stop going. A friend is a word when you're lonely. A friend is a guide when you're searching. A friend is a smile when you're sad. And a friend is a song when you're glad. Dietrich Bonhoeffer stated that the Christian life is not one of gloom, but of ever-increasing joy in the Lord. The psalmist said, Thou hast put gladness in my heart. It's not difficult to be cheerful when everything we desire we have. But when life seems to give us a series of catastrophes, disappointments, and vexation, a buoyancy of the Spirit is not so easily attained. If our lives were in peril every moment through rebellion at home and plots and snares around, a few of us would be found capable under such circumstances of writing morning and evening hymns. Yet such were the circumstances under which David wrote Psalms 4. In the midst of the calamity, he said, You have caused me to react in an unexpected manner. You see, the only reason why we get to really enjoy and draw strength from the life of Job is that Job lived through his calamity, trusted God, and came out a blessed man. David said, you've caused me to rejoice. You have caused me to take pleasure knowing my future is in your hands and not in the hands of men. He said, I find now a happiness which earthly things could not produce. I have a peace of conscience and joy in the spirit, such an inward happiness. He said, because I know the source of my gladness. I can change my thoughts as Paul did. In Psalms 37 and 4, the Bible tells us to delight ourselves in the Lord, and he shall give us the desires of our heart. In Psalms 21 and 1, to the chief musician, a psalm of David, the king of, shall joy in the strength, O Lord, in thy strength, O Lord, and in thy salvation, how greatly shall he rejoice. In Psalms 20 and 4, the Bible says, Grant thee according to thine own heart, and fulfill all thy counsel. In 1 John, the disciple of Jesus writes this, And this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. Verse 15 of that same chapter says, And if we know that he hear us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desired of him. But the Apostle Paul said in Acts 26 and verse 2, when talking to Agrippa, he said, I think myself happy. He said, I esteem it a favor and a privilege to be permitted to make my boast in the Lord further and to know that he is the one and he is the one that gives what he gives to me will be both a source of gladness and also the provision to experience the gladness. Isaiah chapter 58 and verse 14, the Bible says, Then shalt thou delight thyself in the Lord, and I will cause thee to ride upon the high places of the earth, and feed thee with the heritage of Jacob thy father, for the mouth of the Lord hath spoken it. You see, it really takes so little to make us sad, just a sliding word or a doubting sneer, just a scornful smile on the lips of a person or someone we hold dear. Our footsteps will lag, though the goal seem near, and we lose the courage and hope we had. So little it does to make us sad, but also when you turn the coin over, it does take just so little to make us glad, just a cheering clasp of a friendly hand. Just a word from someone who will understand. And we finish the task we long had planned. And lose the doubt and fear we had. 
And then, oh, then we realize <clears throat> it takes so little to make us glad. In Psalms 20, verse 7, the psalmist would write, Some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we will remember the name of the Lord our God. I close with this today. An old man was asked what robbed him of joy the most in his lifetime. He replied, of things that never happen. Someone has given us three keys to happiness. Number one, fret not, John 13, 1, because God loves you. Number two, faint not, because God holds you. Psalms 139 and verse 10. And the last one is, fear not, for God keeps you. Psalms chapter 121 and verse 5. Let's pray. Lord, thank you that we know that our gladness and our happiness and our joy is found in you, O Lord. And help us to remember that the joy of the Lord is our strength and that you will lead us, you will guide us, and you will help us, God, as long as our hope and trust and faith is in you. And Lord Jesus, you will do all things according to your good pleasure. And Lord, your blessings will make us rich and will add no sorrow. We thank you and we praise you for this. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Have a great day in Christ. And know this, that God is on your side. And I pray that you will have a God-filled day.